Welcome to We Will Rise, Creating Hope, an inspirational call with faith leaders presented by Northeast Delta Human Services Authority's Faith Partnership Initiative with messages of hope, understanding, encouragement, and overcoming adversity. As a government agency, Northeast Delta HSA can effectively help our citizens meet many of their physical and behavioral health needs. However, government cannot solve complex societal problems alone, so we are calling on Houses of Faith to join with us as we seek to battle mental illness and addiction. When evidence-based treatment is combined with faith, our region's people will gain a greater sense of purpose, belonging, and hope. With the current global coronavirus pandemic, this is our opportunity to gather as a community and build a unified Northeast Louisiana where everyone thrives and reaches their full human potential. We will rise, creating hope. Amen. Good afternoon, and welcome to Northeast Delta Human Services Authority's Faith Partnership Initiative Daily Call. We will rise, creating hope. And once again, I will be sharing today's message of hope with you. But before I get started, I would like to pray, and if you would just join me in a short prayer so that we can talk about this message that God has given me today. Father, we thank you for you are our God and you are our Lord and we get under the covering of you, and we thank you for such an opportunity to speak forth to your people. For you said in your word, if my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then you would hear from heaven, will forgive the sins, and will heal the land. And we thank you, God, today that you are the one that is healing the land. You said that if two of us should come together agreeing us touching, that we should have anything that we ask of our Father, which is in heaven. So today we touch and agree that we are your children. We touch and agree, O oh God, that we are under the covering and the anointing of you. We touch and agree that the blood of Jesus Christ has been applied on us and that no pestilence shall come now our dwelling. So, Father, I bless each person on the line today that they are the head and not the tail, above and not beneath. I bless them that no sickness shall be in their body, and we take authority over everything that the enemy has tried to do. And, God, we thank you that we shall have the mind of Christ, that we are the light of the world, and that we shall walk in the light that you have given us. And we thank you right now, and I pray that the words that I speak, O oh God, shall be comforting and healing to your people, and that, God, that we will see where we are and that our eyes of understanding shall be open today to know that you are a God that will never leave us nor forsake us, and that this did not catch you by surprise, and that you are working and operating in the midst of us. I thank you that all things are not good, but you said that all things work together for good for those that love the Lord and for those that called according to your purpose. So we thank you for being with us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. All right, I want to talk to you today about something that I believe is so important during this time, and that is your peace. Your peace. Yes, we all know that we are in a pandemic. We know that we're all, regardless of color or, or background or creed or denomination or where we live, we're all dealing with the same thing. So the playing field is the same. We're all affected by this in one way or another. And God spoke to me the other day, and he said, tell my people just to hold on to their peace. I was driving down the street, and I saw a bumper sticker that read, no Jesus, no peace. Then underneath it were these words, no K-N-O-W Jesus, no K-N-O-W peace. That's not only a clever bumper sticker, but it is biblically accurate. The Bible tells us in Isaiah 26 and 3, thou will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee because he trusts in thee. We can have peace in this unexpected crisis of life, I have had to exercise peace every day, get up each day and not allow this pandemic or anything that's going on, the crisis that we are experiencing, some of the suffering and the pain and the disappointments and the discouragement, you name it, 
It has come along with this pandemic. But God says we can have peace in the midst of this. But in order to have peace, we have to keep our minds on the right thought. I do not allow too much of the information of what's going on to come into my mind every day over and over and over again. I've spoken with some people, and they have allowed two or three hours a day of just watching the numbers and everything that's taking place. I want to discourage you from that. Yes, I want you to have the facts. I want you to have the wisdom, but at the same time, the Bible tells us to guard our minds. In other words, 1 Peter 1 and 13 says, Wherefore, gird up the loins of your mind, be sober, and hope to the end for the grace that is to be brought unto you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Now, that word gird means to bind, to restrain, to fix, or to tighten. In other words, don't just let your mind hang loose during this time. Be sure that you are girding up the loins of your mind, that you're mindful about what you're allowing to come into your mind. Throughout the New Testament, we're told that our battles do not take place in the temporal realm, but in the spiritual realm. And we're told to renew our minds with the word of God. Paul told us in Romans 8 and 6, if you set your mind on the flesh, it is death. But to set your mind on the spirit, it is life and it is peace. And that's what we want every day is the peace of God. I get up each morning, and before I get out of the bed, the first thing I do is thank God for a day that I've never seen before. And then I trust him that he's already in this day because he is the alpha and he is the omega. So he's already been here where we are. So the next thing I ask him for is give me peace. God, give me the peace of you. See, to have peace, you have to be careful what you're thinking about. Every battle is won or lost in the arena of your mind. And one of the most heartbreaking stories, which I want to share just a little bit of it with you, in the Old Testament is told in Numbers when the Israelites disobeyed God by refusing to take possession of the land he had prepared for them. I want to just give you just a little briefness of that because this is a very sad story in the Word of God, in the Bible, because the Israelites saw themselves as small and weak, and they believed in their own mind. See, the belief comes in their mind. It came in their mind that they were as grasshoppers before giants, and many times we're looking at the pandemic as a giant, not understanding that everything is under the name of God. They were unable to take possession of their land because of the way they were thinking. The giants who themselves had been afraid of the children of Israel were instead empowered. They were empowered because of the Israelites' fear. So see, your fear can give power to this pandemic. The fear can give power, not that the pandemic itself can do anything any more than what it's going to do, but because we fear, then it empowers that thing which is around us. They said we seem to ourselves like grasshoppers, and we seemed to them. Who told them? They never had a conversation with the uh, with the uh, uh, those uh, uh, people that they went to take their land. They were never they never had conversation with them. But because they thought it in their own minds, it brought fear to them. It was fear that caused the Israelites to miss out on the promise of what God had for them. Why did I share this with you? Because God does not want us to be in fear. He wants us to have peace. It is critically important to stay conscious of what's going on in your mind because random thoughts lead to random accomplishments that rarely build upon one another. I look back into the scriptures, and this is one of my favorite scriptures in 1 Peter 5 and 7, where Peter tells us, cast all your anxieties. All your cares on him because he cares for you. Remind yourself every day that he cares about you. He cares about what you're going through. He cares about what's happening in the world. Why? Because he loves his people. So he cares. And peace is one of the fruit of the spirit. The fruit of the spirit is peace. And this peace is something that we should search for each day. We should make sure that we're holding on to our peace. I told you, hold on to your peace. What is this peace? Peace is harmony. It's undisturbedness. It's free from fears and agitation and, and passion. 
It's free from that frustration that comes. And believe me, I've spoken with a lot of people over these last three months that are experiencing a lot of frustration and a lot of, of, of disturbedness and operating in fear. And I understand it. That's why I'm saying to you today, the word for you is to hold on to your peace. In other words, seek after your peace eagerly. If you find out that something is stealing your peace through the day, then pull back. Take one, two, three counts, and then realize i got to hold on to my peace. Do not merely desire your peace, but pursue it. Go after it. I have to go after my peace every day. And, yes, I know the word of God. Now, yes, I'm talking to you, but listen to me. We have to go after our peace each day during this time. Why? Because so many things are taking place. We are out of our uh, regular schedules. We're out of our norm. We're out of what we normally do every day. We're not talking to the same people. We're not fellowshipping. And you know all of that, but I just want you to know that by doing this time, to make it on through in a spirit of peace, we have to pr- pursue peace. Jesus said in John fourteen twenty seven, peace I leave with you. Now, he could have said, I leave you my wealth, I leave you my wisdom. Of course, we know we can get all of that. But he said, peace I leave with you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. So he was saying, do not let your hearts be troubled. Neither let them be afraid. Because I'm going to give you this peace, the peace that belongs to me, Jesus said. So stop allowing yourself today to be agitated and disturbed. Do not permit yourself to be fearful and intimidated, cowardly, and unsettled by this. Allow the peace of God to rule in your heart. Yes, I know that the pandemic is here. Yes, I know all the facts that have surrounded it. I've read it over the last couple of days. I've made stay, stay up with all that the media is sharing with us. But I want you to know that it did not come to stay. In the fullness of time, this will pass. And when this pass, I want you to be able to say that I use that time to move me forward. I use that time to reset my life, to reorganize some things in my life. I use that time to develop peace like never before. I use that time to work on those things that I really wanted to work on that I never had time because I was so busy and life was moving so fast. So your job today, and I'm giving you a job assignment today, your job today is to hold on to your peace. I want to encourage you that everything is going to work out all right. When the curtains are pulled back, you're going to see the handiwork of God in the midst of all of this. Jesus said the peace that Jesus offers is a special peace. He said not like the world peace. See, the world offers a peace that is not sure because it is not grounded in the things of God. Right now, everything that's going on in the world is taking our peace. Why? Because the peace that the world gives is based on circumstances, based on situations, and based on happiness. But the peace that Jesus left us is based on who he is. It's based on the love that he has. It's based on us being able to trust him. When things are not going your way, you all listen. I, 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 I don't know who's all on the line, so I don't directly know my audience, but I know that this word fits for everybody, regardless of what you're going through, regardless of what your job position is, regardless of what your religious background is. This message is for everyone. When things are not going your way or there are challenges that we cannot fix within our time, The world peace will leave us. Right now, the world peace has left us. Why? Because the world has practically shut down. Everything that we loved, all the football games, basketball, everything else has shut down. But Jesus said in John 16, 33, I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In this world, you will have trouble, but take heart. I have overcome the world. Right there, there's a shouting moment right there, because that's a shouting moment for me, that Jesus has overcome the world. This is a situation of the world. So calm down, cheer up. We don't have to be agitated and disturbed by the things of this world. You have the word made flesh, 
the spirit of Christ residing in you. You've been given the name above every name as your spiritual authority, and you have a two-edged sword, which is the word of God at your disposal, and I want to encourage you to use it. The prolific, pronounced apostle Paul tells us in Philippians 4, he says, do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God and the peace of God which transcends all understanding, will guard your heart and mind in Christ Jesus. Wow. He says all we got to do is bring it to him in prayer and lay it down to him, give it to him, and then walk away and watch his peace guard our hearts and guard our minds. So you can have a peace which transcends your own understanding. I know it because I'm exercising it right now. I'm a busy person, always busy, always doing things, always feel like, I have to have a project. I have to have an assignment. I have to have something that I'm working towards. And then when this began to happen, immediately I started feeling my peace go out the window, out the doors, because I couldn't put my hands on things like I'm used to putting my hands on. And then God spoke that word to me about give it to him, and through prayer and petition, the peace of God will guard my heart and my mind, and I could stay in perfect peace if my mind was stayed on him. Remember the prophet Isaiah said, he will keep you in perfect peace if your mind is stayed on him. So you can have peace which transcends your understanding. That path that transcends, transcends means to go beyond a limit or range of thought or belief, to go beyond something in quality or achievement, to rise above. And that's the kind of peace that we have that God wants you to have today. So once again, your assignment is to hold on to your peace. When you have peace which transcends, it will be your guard. It will guard your heart. It will guard your mind from things that otherwise would try to come in and steal your peace. Peace will be your guard. When the world is crazy and everything around you is not going as planned, when it looks like your vision and your purpose is not coming to pass or it's taking too long or peace will keep your heart and keep your mind. When things seem like life has been put on a hold, and it has, I want to encourage you just push the reset button. That's all. This is just a reset time. What does reset mean? A time to rearrange, a time to reorganize, a time to retune some things in your life. Use it as a positive time. You know, I'm looking at this as a glass being half full instead of half empty. This is such a positive time for me. Why? Because I can't change what's going on. So I choose to allow peace to operate in my life so that I can rearrange, reorganize, and retune some things and be ready that when this lifts up and when they say that it's time, that it's over, and believe me, it is coming. I know that we've been at it for weeks, but that's okay. It's coming. This is a time where you can rearrange and retune, reorganize some things in your life. Now, Paul told us this. Paul said, just, just pray about it, submit it to God, and the peace of God will pass all understanding. When Paul wrote this, he was a man who had three shipwrecks, five beatings of 39 lashes each, three beatings with Roman rods, a public stoning, and no less than five imprisonments. And when he wrote this to us, Paul was in prison. He was in, he was in prison writing this. See, peace means being all right with God, being all right with your purpose, being all right with the position that you're in. That's what peace means. Peace is a state of mind and a condition of the heart. It is a fruit of the spirit. When our heart and our mind is out of kilter or out of order, then our peace is out of order. That's why I want to encourage you to hold on to your peace. Find those things that will bring peace to you and not take peace away from you. Use this as a time where you can reset some things. Reset things. Remember, peace is calmness. It's stillness. It's a serenity. It's not freedom from strife. Peace is not merely the absence of struggle, but it is the abiding presence of calmness in the midst of hardship in the midst of struggle, in the midst of this pandemic, in the midst of what we're going on. Don't lose your peace during this 
short time. This is really a short time. This is a time that we can once again reset. You don't remember but two things that I have said to you today. Remember, hold on to your peace because it will guard your hearts and your mind. And then remember, reset. This is a time for you to hit the reset button, which means a time that you can rearrange, reorganize, and retune some things in your life. Peace within is the peace that comes from the inside when we're facing things on the outside. So I want to once again encourage you to let peace be your empire. The last thing I want to share before I I close is Philippians 4, 4 through 8. Again, Apostle Paul said to us, rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. See, you have to trust God in order to rejoice in this, knowing that he has all things in his control, and his name is above all names. He's, Paul says, let your moderation be known unto all men, for the Lord is at hand. Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication. Let your requests be made known unto God, and the peace of God which passes all understanding shall guard your heart and your mind in Christ Jesus. Paul's words are directed at all of us who are carrying any burdens, carrying any worry, carrying any cares of the world on our shoulders. Paul says that we, have, we need to realize that God is for us. So he says, don't be anxious about this. Don't be overly worried, uneasy, and frustrated in anger, angry about this. Just give it to God. Your assignment is to hold on to your peace. Let peace rule. So many people are worried during this time, and I understand that. Worry is so common right now. We forget that our God will never leave us nor forsake us. We forget that the earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof. So all we have to do is cast our burdens on him and let him take care of them. Ephesians 3, Paul says, I pray that out of his glorious riches that he may strengthen you with power through his spirit in your inner being. Don't worry. God already knows tomorrow. Tomorrow's worries are sufficient of itself. Today, you hold on to your peace. You hold on the peace that Jesus himself has left you. And when you hold on to your peace and knowing that he has all the cares, all your anxieties, because you have cast them on, on him, the God of peace, will keep you in perfect peace. Isaiah 9 and 6 says, His name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. He is the Prince of Peace. God wants you to have peace. And then I want you to think on these things. Think on whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things, and the God of peace will be with you. God bless you today. Once again, hold on to your peace. This concludes my message for today. On behalf of Northeast Delta Space Partnership Initiative that I am so proud to be a part of, I want to thank you for listening today and invite you to join us again tomorrow at noon for more words of hope during these difficult and challenging times. God bless you. Hold on to your peace, and we will talk to you again on tomorrow. Thank you for joining We Will Rise, Creating Hope, an inspirational call with faith leaders presented by Northeast Delta Human Services Authority's Faith Partnership Initiative. Please join us on our future calls, Monday through Friday. We will rise, creating hope.